So uh, greetings to you all and many thanks to the organization of the webinars, especially to Dr. Maxili and Dr. Crawford. As you will be, have guessed by my age, I haven't been present during the entire duration of the project, which has been active for more than six years, although I've been there for four of them and I am entirely up to date. Uh, that being said, I'd like to make it clear that I will be talking on behalf of the dozens of people that have made this possible, the dozens of people that um, form the THEPAC, this group, this research group. Uh, okay, so I may begin. During the past decades, uh, multidisciplinary studies have become omnipresent uh, within the archaeological sciences, sometimes working together with methodologically and thematically distant disciplines, often from the STEM group, uh, that is, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. After all, to understand the processes, to go beyond the mere description and identify causal relationships, a deep knowledge of the functioning of the context of the subject is essential. This approach to social sciences, namely a part of sociophysics, has changed the way some archaeologists understand the dynamics of a historical society, or in this case, economy. In this sense, the implementation of the network science in archaeological context is growing steadily, although with some difficulties. Its main object of study are the complex systems, that, that is, uh, any part of the reality of which we can define some limits with the only requirement of being composed of multiple interconnected elements. Sorry to interrupt, but do you mean yes. to be sharing your slides? Oh, that I didn't know. Uh, okay, uh, let me see how... Um, I, can, I can even see you. Um, you should do the screen share. Okay, now I can. Yeah. I think I log out somewhere. Okay, uh, can you see it now? Perfect. Okay, so uh, where was I? Uh, this data is presented in a complex network, a mathematical representation where its components are displayed in abstract objects called nodes and the relations between them in links that connect them, regardless of the concrete reality of the analyzed system. Uh, in the majority of the archaeological studies, nodes are the representation of the context, and that is archaeological evidence, which can be grouped together according to their relative, uh, relative location. But what happens when we work with geographically scattered or decontextualized sorry, remains, such as amphoric types or ceramic compositional groups? In this case, a cluster analysis algorithms can help to classify group objects based on their individual properties. Um, following this academic inclination towards multidisciplinarity, the research group CEPAC from the University of Barcelona set up in 2013 an ambitious initiative. The main objective of the EPNET, an ERC advanced grant project named Production and Distribution of Food during the Roman Empire, Economic and Political Dynamics, is to set up an innovative framework to investigate the political and economical mechanisms that characterized uh, the dynamics of the commercial trade system during the Roman Empire. The latter offers a particularly interesting case study, firstly because it constitutes a political, economic and social framework that integrated diverse cultures through con conquest but it simultaneously used complex social integration initiatives to cope with this diversity. Secondly, the empire was the stage in which a dynamic economy or economies, depending on whose opinion, was developed with its own mechanisms of interconnection and interdependency. That, uh, hence the name of our research group. The core of the research lies in the study of the geographical origin on the products that were transported in the amphorae and, and on economic transactions. It also assesses the social positions uh, of and relationships between those involved in trade. As it will be subsequently developed, don't worry, the epigraphical record is the element that has guided the global research especially the stamps, graffiti, and titulipicti on Dressel 20 amphorae. 
The latter originated in southern Hispania, more precisely in the Provincia Baetica, were created to contain larger amounts of olive oil. The choice of amphoric type is not fortuitous. During the first three centuries AD, the Guadalquivir and Genil rivers uh, were used as an export route for the amphoric carrying olive oil produced in the Baetica, which was sent to many areas of the Roman Empire, primarily to the western Limes and Rome. It is in the Urbs and its Monte Testaccio, an ancient Roman era state landfill, where more information has been recovered by our research group. The unusual preservation conditions of this site have allowed for a better understanding of a system of stamps, graffiti, and titulipicti far more elaborated than any other known amphoric type. The majority of the studied amphorae were stamped on one or both their handles with a short sequence of letters and or symbols, mostly describing one of more or more trianomina of individuals tied to the trade of that product although it is difficult to assess what was the role of this uh, person in the product process, or in the complex process, indeed, of production, filling and transporting of the amphora. As they are not unique, these codes can be found in different and usually mutually distant places, so uh, they seem a reliable proxy to study the long-range commercial relationships in the ancient world. To study the trade routes for the Baetican olive oil and a possible influence of the provincial system on its distribution, some hypotheses, theoretical hypotheses, have been established. The first one uh, states that the settlements of the same province share similar amphoric stamps. The second, uh, that there are groups of provinces whose stamps are more similar than others found in other parts of the empire. And the third states that sites receiving products via different, different trade routes would be supplied by different agents. So some divergences are to be found in, within the same site. The long lasting Roman tradition of stamping the amphorae has been widely used to identify trade and ownership patterns for decades. We didn't create anything in that uh, sense, but mostly uh, on a local or provincial scale. We use this proxy to find links between sites in the western part of the Roman Empire by comparing the similarity of stamps found across thousands of archaeological sites. The data used for our research come from uh, the corpus of amphorae with Latin epigraphy compiled by the Theipac, currently containing more than 50,000 stamps. In, the, in this slide you will see that there is a little more than 50,000 stamps. The corpus, online since 1995, is currently being migrated into an ontological system. So, through the use of metadata, we can interrelate several databases to increase our knowledge and ability to link several aspects of our research. The first element, element to assess is the note, the choice of which uh, poses an initial problem, as there is more than one scale, namely local and global, to solve this issue and homogenize this data, a scale needs to be chosen. Normally, notes in archaeological sites are context or attributes of context, grouped together uh, according to their mutual relationship. In our case, we consider amphoric types or, amphor or ceramical compositional groups, discretizing a continuous spectrum of differences. But it's uh, a rather theoretical um, differentiation. Connections are the other main part of a complex system, and in our case, they present a broader repertoire of issues. The link between a node and another depends on the interpretation, since what defends the meaning, defines the meaning of a connection is the research hypothesis, research that I previously mentioned. In this case, direct observation being out of the picture, the links need to be inferred. Uh, nodes are then social groups associated to places and connections are interactions defined by concrete processes, in our case the trade on olive oil. Here you will, you will have an example um, uh, of uh, these kind of relations that I just explained. Although uh, theoretical approaches might indicate uh, otherwise, it is expected that some groups of archaeological sites, that is clusters, 
are more similar among each other than to any uh, other node in the complex system. Those groups can be analyzed as a community, so the interactions between similarity groups are visible in the physical expression of the complex system. We chose to measure the similarity between these sites by means of the brainer robinson coefficient, BR here, where for all categories, here uh, K, P is the total percentage in assemblages I and J. This provides a scale of similarity from 0 to 200, where 200 is the perfect similarity and 0 is no similarity. We chose this system because it, its definition is intuitive and it was developed within archaeology specific, specifically for comparing assemblages in terms of the proportions of types or other categorical data. That is, it's a system designed specifically for archaeology. The main uh, and geographically broader cases, the Germanic provinces and the whole Roman Empire, we will talk later about our case studies, were the first ones to test our approach to the network science. Uh, in other cases, rather than similarity, it was dissimilarity what was used to analyze those data sets. The similarity between two sites was based on the number of stamp codes that were present present in one location and absent in the other one. This was quantified by the Jacquard distance. You will find here, sorry. The distance between the sets of codes uh, that you will find here as CI and CJ collected in a pair of sites I and J, that's the same terminology than in the previous um, sequence, is defined as the ratio between the number of codes found in both sites and the number of codes found at least in one site, as can be seen in this equation. The Jacquard distance is bounded between zero, um, which means that the sites have exactly the same stamp codes, and one. That means that the sites do not share any code. In this, in this, uh, in this sense, it shares the same um, same functioning system than the previous uh, brainerd robinson uh, coefficient. Once the Jacquard distance matrix uh, has uh, is created with all the possible combinations, the next step is to assess the first hypothesis using the null hypothesis significant testing, NHST, as you will find it here. The objective of the NHST is to know whether an identified pattern could have been generated by chance. That is actually our null hypothesis. The gathered evidence has been a product of chance. The other null hypothesis with, uh, we have worked with is uh, the Jacquard distance between two settlements is independent from its belonging to the same province. In this case, the objective is not to compare the stamps between provinces, but the similarities between the groups of stamps found in sites located in said provinces. This distinction is essential to integrate into the analysis uh, of the multi-scale component of the dataset. If we directly compared the stamps and the provinces, we would not be able to identify the cases where, for example, the sites from the same province receive amphorae from two separate trade routes and two independent suppliers. To solve this problem, we implemented the multi-response permutation procedure, MRPP, as you will see here. An algorithm that evaluates the average distance between the elements of one category, that is, the sites from a single province, and compares it with the average distance between all the elements of the dataset. This, these hypotheses have been put in test in various cases involving the Roman trade. Let me remind you that this is a project that has spanned more than six years. From a wider to a closer perspective, the main case study is All the Empire, one of the first and most demanding tests for our methodological approach. Once the results prove satisfactory, other provincial and local scale ana analyses, sorry, were carried out regarding the Germanic, Britannic, and Mauritanian regions. Furthermore, uh, some particular cases are to be mentioned, uh, such as the study of the workshops near the Llobregat River uh, in Catalonia, in Spain, 
which improves our, uh, our understanding of the final phase in the traceability of the food containers in Rome's Monte Testaccio, uh, which is uh, the last case study, as you will be able to see here. Every case study I am going to talk about has strong ties to one or more doctoral theses from several members of the CEPAC during decades, as you can see here. And now we are finally able to have a broad overview of trading food in the Roman Empire, both from our own research and the thousands of amphoric stamps within the data. Here you can see a visual representation of all the stamps in our database, that is our face first case study, with the ones from Rome uh, clearly highlighted. We have to admit that without our partnership with the data analyst, computation experts and other experts, we wouldn't have been able to process such a big amount of data, thus making network science a key player in uh, our mm, success. Let's keep it in quote marks. In the network, we have ignored the materials found in the producing places of the Baetica. Remember that we are talking about olive oil exclusively. Likewise, the in the first visualization, we represent the total of Dressel 20 collected in the Thaipak database, making itself present uh, in Rome, an important consumer center where the largest number of amphorae with known epigraphy uh, have been found, a fact that had, has been biased by our excavations uh, of Monte Testaccio. We remove Rome to facilitate the analysis of the distribution network, as it is a particular case uh, of consumption. Here's the visual representation without Rome and with the main clusters or nodes highlighted. As you can see, it covers uh, most of the western uh, provinces of the Roman Empire. The representation of this general network uh, shows the groupings of these materials by regions, key for the development of the hypothesis of their distribution, as I previously uh, explained. The results of this case study confirm that, he, that the provincial structure had a relevant weight in the organization of the olive uh, oil trade and the use of hubs in the logistic of food distribution. The most interesting issue here, uh, at least for me, is that the network itself represents a disorganization in hubs for the distribution of food through the empire, without even interacting with it, confirming that has already uh, what was already uh, been established mathematically by Xavier Rubio, our lead computational researcher, and that is the lab, the lab guy. Then it's our turn to elaborate hypotheses and refute it or confirm them, depending on both the data and other factors, such as written source or field archaeology. Particularly important is the pattern of similarities between the Atlantic uh, Rhine provinces, um, Britannia, Germania and Mauritania, in contrast to the supply road that uh, would have the Rhone as the diving, driving access. This uh, will have an important impact on the hypothesis developed in the 80s by José Remesal, the former director of the research group, which defended a supply line via the Atlantic Ocean rather than the uh, Rhone. In 1996, uh, José Remesal proposed the hypothesis of supplying food to the troops of the Roman frontiers through what he called the Atlantic Route. In 2017, a study of similarities based on mathematics was published that validated Remesal's theory. The present study linking archaeology and uh, network science seems to strengthen the published mathematical analysis, making similar patterns visible even at a smaller scale, uh, such as in the case of the supply of the military outpost of the Limes Germanicus and Britannicus. It's, it's an even logical conclusion. Um, before the imported food uh, reaches a small castra manned by a century or an auxiliary cohort in the Ger Germania Superior, uh, it will have previously been in its capital, namely Mogontiacum or the modern mines, for its redistribution. 
In conclusion, the supply route that would have the Rhone as the driving axis, perhaps more used in the first decades of the Roman expansion to the center of Europe or for other products, Hence, the network shows some approximation to the materials found in the area of Gaul, where the Rhone runs, or in its vicinity. In the next slides, you may find some uh, closer glimpses to provincial trends, each of them with uh, several papers and books de dedicated to them. Um, that's why I won't talk specifically about uh, these cases which and uh, papers and books which I encourage you to consult if you find them of interest. Most of them, I have to say, uh, are uh, the result of one of the previously mentioned doctoral theses. So in the end, uh, you may want to uh, go back. You may want me to go back uh, to that slide and take some notes. So uh, please uh, do tell me. Um, in this uh, case study, uh, we go down one step in scale and we present you a local approach to the Llobregat Rivers Basin, uh, home to an industrious um, foric production, albeit not for olive oil, but for wine. It, in any case, uh, what you can see here are the workshops dedicated to the production of amphorae to contain oil. The analysis of uh, networks at the local level allows us to visualize the producti productive uh, associations of the different ceramists, also in microscale contexts such as this one. Okay, uh, let's go to the jewel of the crown of our uh, research uh, group, um, the Testaccio. Uh, the Testaccio is an artificial hill uh, formed in the sub Aventine plain, almost one kilometer in perimeter and almost 50 meters high, formed by the remains of millions of amphorae. About 85% came from the Baetica, the current Andalusia, containing olive oil in the known as Dressel 20 type. The high concentration of the same epigraphs makes us think about the existence of controlled unloading. <coughs> we believe that uh, there, should, uh, there should have been an administration of the mountain and responsible for their maintenance and organization of the unloads. The excavation of Mount Testaccio is particular as there, are, there is no soil or well-defined strata, as you can see in these uh, pictures, but only amphorae and more amphorae when you can only excavate by creating an artificial system, which uh, we have established by dividing the boreholes into one meter. Uh, fr from these uh, from these boreholes, we extract the materials of 20 by 20 centimeters preserving, uh, thus preserving the stability of a rather um, dangerous uh, excavation, as you can see in the bottom right um, picture. Um, among our uh, documents are Tituli Picti with consular dating, and that's why and that's how we can establish in a safe way the stratigraphic succession. In some cases, we have been able to reconstruct the epigraphic set of an amphora. In some cases, less frequent, I have to say, we have found or reconstructed fragments in which stamps and tituli picti have been attached. Uh, this is the ideal of our excavation, uh, to find fragments in which the information obtained through the tituli picti, uh, thanks to its union with a stamp, we can refer to uh, the specific place from which the amphora was exported in the Baetica. So we would get the, to reconstruct uh, our information at a micro-historical level. To see the correlation between the materials and that we cannot physically unite, we try to apply other methods, uh, as is the case here. In this uh, um, work, we uh, applied new methods to try uh, to better relate our different materials in order to establish, uh, through statistical methods, a better correlation between our materials. Uh, the construction of an inscription network uh, form uh, here formed by stamps and tituli picti beta uh, using the asymmetric uh, index allows us first to visualize how the network correctly uh, groups the stamps in, of the same production area and that they could be on the same object. That is, for example, those produced in the Fligina virginensia that has several stamps. 
Uh, and second, which of the tituli beta could once be on those uh, objects? In this way, uh, using this method, we can propose several of these private agents linked to the marketing and distribution of olive oil amphorae produced uh, in the Wirginensia. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, Marchi Corneli Protogenis, uh, Luki Lituki Savini, and uh, so forth. Um, the application of uh, the science of networks or network science in archaeology studies, in particular in amphorology and epigraphy, makes it possible to, to speed up the research for patterns uh, with which to confirm or not different hypotheses. Uh, its advantages include the treatment of big data and the elaboration of readable visualizations, such as, for example, this one. Um, uh, yeah, visual um, representations, as well as the acceleration of the analysis processes of our data, a process that would take years uh, only to um, assess, um, let's say it uh, analogically. In the proposed cases studied from traditional methods or those uh, derived from the digital humanities, they allow adding a new study tool, which um, makes it possible to validate hypotheses already raised or making new ones. This uh, partnership with computational sciences does come with risks, though. Uh, we can leave a human, uh, human system, in this case trait, so complex and usually subjective for computers to analyze on their own. Um, and it's necessary uh, not to jump into uh, network science uh, critically. That's why we have always preserved social sciences and humanities as our main approach to this phenomenon, uh, as no stage between production and consumption is completely, completely rational and logical. As it happens, our objective with this presentation, and maybe some of you will have been able to see it, uh, apart from presenting the results of more than six or seven years of intensive research, uh, is to show the archaeological community that network science is a viable and apparently successful way of uh, launching ambitious and analogically unfeasible projects, no matter the scale, as you have seen. Uh, no, uh, there's no need to be worried if uh, we want to work with the whole Roman Empire or just a few workshops uh, in a river basin. Uh, so uh, we enthusiastically encourage you to apply uh, the methodology to your uh, research uh, if you see it fit. And um, that uh, would be all. Um, here you have um, the, the full reference to, um, to a paper in the Journal of Archaeological Science, um, where you will be able to find uh, all the numbers and all the data and all the explanations uh, in our, uh, about our methodology that I haven't uh, said it here for, uh, I believe, for your sake. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, that would be all. Uh, of course, I will answer uh, any question you have for me, but I will be glad to re redirect uh, them to the lead researchers if uh, I'm not able to, to, well, to answer them. <laughs>